Hello, everybody. Thank you for your patience as we worked out some technical difficulties. For the folks who are online, we had a, a, a the hybrid option uh, here in council chambers was not working and, and we were having some difficulty. So thank you for your patience through the delayed start. I'm Marissa Elkins, I'm city council at large, uh, and we'll be um, presiding through at least the first part of this meeting, uh, which is both an organizational meeting, meaning that we will uh, be electing the chair and vice chair. Um, but unlike the other committee organizational meetings, we also have on uh, we also have on the agenda uh, uh, some legislation to consider. So with that, I will ask Laura to call the roll. Sure. Councillor Elkins here. Councillor Perry here. Councillor Mayori. Here. Councillor Jarrett. Here. Um, I would announce at this time that uh, after a great deal of efforts that the meeting is being audio and video recorded <laughs> uh, and available to be viewed um, after the fact. Um, all right. Um, the first item on the agenda after that is election of chair. So I would uh, open nominations. Councillor Jarrett. I would like to nominate Marissa Elkins for chair. Thank you. Are there any other nominations? Right. Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. Uh, oh, sorry. May I speak? Yes, oh, by all means. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. I normally don't. Yes, please. please. Uh, um, yes, Marissa, I uh, have really appreciated you as a vice chair of legislative matters for the last two years. I appreciate your knowledge coming from your experience on the planning board. Um, you have deftly stepped in when I had been absent uh, and uh, your attention to detail and your passion for legislation uh, is as is noted. And I think you'll do a great job as, as chairing this committee. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Mayor. Yeah, I just wanna say yes, I, it's an excellent fit and I'm um, glad to, to be a part of it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, I, uh, I, yes, I, I, uh, without other nominations, I, uh, my tendency to move ahead. Um, I will just briefly say thank you. Thank you for those kind, kind remarks. Um, and I'm very, uh, ha happy, um, and glad to be serving in this capacity. And I agree. I think it's in my wheelhouse, um, and enjoyed very much my first term on the committee and will be happy to, uh, be, uh, uh, leading in this way, and uh, I'm hoping that we can have uh, a product productive and thoughtful and creative uh, meetings. Uh, I think all those things can be accomplished within our discussions, and um, and I look forward to it. So, so with that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm Councillor Perry. Yes, or or Marissa Elkins. Councillor Mayori. Marissa Elkins. Councillor Jarrett. Marissa Elkins. And Councillor Elkins. Marissa Elkins. Thank you. Um, and now I would open nominations for vice chair. Um, I would like to nominate Councillor Perry for vice chair. Any other nominations? Can I speak? Yes. Please. Yes. Uh, thank you for the nomination. I humbly accept. And uh, I just want to say that moving into the second term, I really have been thinking about intention behind what I want to do, um, you know, ex exploring some committees that I haven't been a part of learning. And I can think of no better person to work with on this committee than you, uh, Councillor Elkin. So I'm looking forward to this uh, term as well. Thank you. Um because uh, we are saying remarks, I, I just would say that part of the, um, I worked with Councillor Perry um, as uh, Councillor Perry's vice chair. Um, of, he was chair of community resources last term um, and uh, enjoyed very much uh, working with uh, Garrick for a little less formal. And, and I'm, well, I'm happy to continue with that. Um, with Garrick on uh, community resources, I'm very glad to, that we have him joining us in this um, committee for this uh, committee's work. I think you're going to bring a lot to it. And I know from experience um, that we uh, make a, a great uh, team. Um, so I'm happy to, I'm happy. 
reunited. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> just realized that we move community resources into legislation. <laughs> I don't know why that just occurred to me. That we're all in yeah. yeah. Uh, we did oh. kind of, didn't we? Yeah. Um, so, um, so reunited. And I won't sing anymore. <laughs> all right. So with that, I would, uh, what are you call the roll? Councilor Mayori. Councilor, Councilor Perry. Councilor Jarrett. Garrick Perry. Councilor Elkins. Garrick Perry. And Councilor Perry. Uh, Garrick Perry. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, I was going to speak. Oh. But it's still okay. Sorry. I'm so uh, sorry. But just, please, go ahead. I just wanted to say, you know, I appreciated your leadership on community resources. And I'm glad to see what you'll, you'll bring to this. Now to the work. Okay. Um now, um, so the next on the agenda is public comment. Um, we have, uh, in other organizational meetings, we haven't had public comment, um, but uh, because we have an agenda item on. But the trick of it is that this is a little bit of a regular meeting and a little bit of an organizational meeting. Um, if you are here to speak about um, an item on the agenda, um, then we would ask that you um, wait until that agenda item um, to speak. So I have a sign up here. Um, and are any of the folks who are signed up here wishing to speak about something other than what's on the agenda? Okay. Great, thanks. Are you looking to speak about something that's on the agenda? Okay. Then we'll hold that for when it comes up on the discussion. Um, does anybody <laughs> online... Is anybody online here to uh, that wishes to speak um, in public comment about something not on the agenda? No. Okay. Thank you. All right. So I am um, gathering from the people in front of me that they, that everybody here wants to speak on the the lighting ordinance. Okay. So with that, um, and there's nobody online um, that's indicating that they wish to speak. So we'll move ahead uh, in the uh, to the agenda. Um, the next thing is is approval of the minutes um, from December 11th, 2023, Joint Planning Board and Legislative Matters uh, meeting. Move approval. Second. Right. Any discussion? All right. We'll call. Please. Oh, we were all here. Oh, so right. Oh. So I won't. Uh, we won't do a roll call. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? With that the minutes are approved. Um, and now, um, we have referred to us um from the last uh, city council meeting. Um, I'm going to go over briefly the um the uh the history of this ordinance. Um which is the, uh, we have before us 23-349, an ordinance to amend chapter 350-12-2 ordinance or outdoor lighting. Um, and the history of this is that this current iteration um, was referred by the city council in its first meeting of this term on January 4th to the legislative committee. Um, that being said, we actually have had been working with on this legislation for quite a long time um and so there's a lot of history there's a lot of history um to back preceding this so we had um a joint um legislative matters and planning board meeting on october 19th um or it was referred to rather in the council meeting to those bodies on october 19th um the that first joint meeting was held uh on uh 11 13 and continued to 12 11 to december 11th um for us to continue um discussion um there was an amended ordinance uh submitted incorporating the comments received at the 11 november 13th meeting um on november 27th on december 11th we had a very very lengthy um legislative merit matters uh meeting um and on that meeting there was a positive recommendation um from both bodies the planning board um included an amendment to set the color temperature maximum to 3000 kelvin instead of 2700 kelvin 
um, and the legislative matter just approved it as proposed. Um, the matter carried over to the new council, which is why we are, are back here um, and referred on the January 4th meeting. And now we are back here and there are um, what is before us tonight includes everything from the previous meetings and uh and there was there were a couple of other uh there were a couple of little things which i'll have i'll ask uh director mish to um to discuss briefly so um i would like to start the conversation briefly by having carolyn if you can update us um on what the most recent iteration is different <laughs> Um, and, um, and then from there, I'll take comments, uh, from the, from the public. Yep. Um, I'll move to open the public hearing. Thank you. Do, uh, yes. Second. Thank you. Any, uh, discussion? Second. All right. So that was moved by Councillor Jarrett and seconded by Councillor Maori. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. With that I will hear from Carolyn. Um, I can use a microphone. Oh, oh should be nice place. Place. Oh, I'm good evening. So, as you as you mentioned, um, Councillor Elkins, um. This had, there was lots of discussion in December um, to finalize and get the text to city council and then city council, um, you know, referred it um, to make sure there was enough time to address it. There were a couple of, I, there were three items that I had recommended just tweaking coming out of that meeting. So the three items are here in front of you. We had a little bit of a confusing um, um, back and forth because I was working off the wrong final draft. Um, and so I think we've gotten that straightened out. So I don't know if, um, Laura, you sent that around today, this afternoon at all, but but suffice it to say, we went, we cleaned everything up and we got the one that was referred to council based on that to December meeting, December 11th meeting. Um, so the three items that I would recommend um, to be slightly tweaked um, relate to the spectrum management section, which is on page seven of the draft of the final draft under item D. So um, there, you, you know, the code goes through illumination levels, uses, energy efficiency, and D is spectrum management, and then there's light control. And so um, the um, recommended language for spectrum management was that the emission of light by all luminaries in all lighting must have a correlated color temperature of light between zero and 2,700 degrees Kelvin. So that is um, what um, moved forward. I would recommend that we accept street lights from that um, and that street lights on public ways may have a color um, correlated color temperature of up to 3000 Kelvin. Um, and the reason for that is based on our current work with our um, design team for Main Street. Um, and, th and that's related to MassDOT and funding for the street lights and making sure that um, we can have the new lighting system for the new layout be covered by um, the TIP uh, program, the Transportation Improvement Program, and not be a local expense that we would need to incur. Um, and so that's, you know, change one, that everything else for outdoor lighting um, uh, remains zero to 2,700 Kelvin. Um, The second item is scrolling down to the street light standards under item five, which is starts on page eight. And um, this uh, has a table of um, backlight, uplight, and glare levels or um, 
um, evaluation, evaluative criteria. And previously, um, the core center lighting um, evaluation criteria for backlight, uplight, and glare had been proposed at being a bug or B rating of two, an uplight rating of zero, and a glare rating of two. Um, my recommendation is to pull central business core and highway business out of that category and create a, another line item just for central business and highway business where the only value that changes is the backlight value, which would be a three. And the reason for that is the width of the right of way. And the, and particularly with Main Street, we're changing the curb line to um, be further into the street and there are going to be much wider sidewalks. So having a, a slightly higher B value allows more of that backlight to spread across to the back of that sidewalk, that wider sidewalk. Um, and um, highway business also is mostly King Street, which is also a wide layout. Um, and um, that's why I had recommended highway business also to be sort of considered in the same realm as there are um, places around the country where um, these new guidance uh, measures are implemented based on the street width. And so that's that one. And then the third item is just adding for clarity, the lighting standard, the lighting ordinance section of the code has always been, has always at the front end provided an out that the planning board could grant a different um, um, lighting level or uh, essentially a waiver from the standards in this category, in this section um, through site plan review. Um, but I added text for the um, council to consider um, below the bug ratings um, to allow specific, more specific language about how that waiver standard might be evaluated in front of the planning board. So it's just creating clarity and specificity for what's already written at the sort of the top of the ordinance, this section. And those are the three category or areas of change that I would recommend. Anybody, anybody have any questions for Carolyn right now? We'll be coming back to her, I'm sure, but. Um, I can go. Um, could you, so, you know, it sounds like the, the major concern that you have presently is, um, the concern about the state funding for for Main Street. Is this funding for lighting all or nothing? And and so is there a concern that we go over some uncertain threshold and there will they will just say, nope, you have to pay for all of it? Or is there will they say, well, we'll pay up to this much and we see you have made these changes and we would like you to pay for this section. Um, it sounds like there are lots of unknowns in in the in the current plan for um as far as what the state what, what will happen with the state um as it relates to lighting it's unknown but i think it's an all or nothing so as it stands now we sort of have been tentatively told that yes we can move. normally lighting is not covered under local projects at all and MassDOT likes to put it in this category. Oh, it's decorative lighting for your downtown streetscape. We don't cover decorative lighting. We've made the argument that we're making such drastic changes to improve the safety by narrowing the streets, which means we're moving the curb line, which means that it doesn't make sense <laughs> to keep our existing lighting. Like we, we need new lighting to be put in new locations that make sense with the new design. Um, so they have allowed us to continue, but they haven't committed. And as pricing increases, um, it'll be, it's an easier target to strip out of the funding in order to cover other things. 
And so to the extent that they can continue to say that, oh, this is really just decorative lighting that you're paying for, uh, we don't want to um, add to their um, propensity to sort of lean in that direction. Mm -hmm. But it is it is unknown, but we've also, um, and we think that um, the change, the difference between 2,700 and 3,000 given the fact that these lights will be dimmed or could be dimmed up to 50%, that dimming the lights is um, um, a much greater improvement on our street lights now than that differential between 2,700 and 3,000, because 3,000 is pretty standard for mass dot for lighting. Um, and what are the cost differences between putting in a 2,700 streetscape and a, a 3,000? I don't, I don't have the numbers. So we don't do, they don't, I've been told that we would need additional poles um, and different lights depending on the location. So it might add to the total number of poles. I don't know what the cost is. Cost the so cost calculations um, get refined the closer you get to one hundred percent. We're on the cusp of submitting seventy five percent, in which they'll be doing a cost assessment. And so that's in a week or something. Um, so I don't know what they're going to identify as a cost for this. And we certainly haven't asked them to do also a cost estimate for um, a different different number of lights, because that means that they're going to have to design two systems, lay it out, under, you know, c calculate the, pick a fixture, understand what the cost is, and then recalculate that. And so... Um, we need to be careful about spending our design dollars too. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else on the committee have any questions right now? Rachel, sorry. Okay. I just wanted to clarify, but if we, but even if we go with 3000, there's no guarantee they're going to cover the lighting, right? True. Yep. That's, all, that's still a possibility. Okay. Thank you. All right. And so if for the moment there isn't uh, any of us that have any questions for right now, then I will open it up um, for uh, to hear from the comments. I would ask that um, we will keep a, 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 a timer on. We'd ask to keep it to three minutes. Um, I'd also ask if you have um, spoken before uh, on this ordinance that um, that you if you can try to limit your comments to what is what is new and what hasn't you know what is n new before us um i think everybody everybody on here was has been part of various conversations in council and then also in legislative matters so um we've all uh there's been a lot of discussion about some of the points that are are already now incorporated in um so as much as possible if we could keep it to um to to what's new that would be very much appreciated um, Derek, do you have a um, time. time? Yeah. So and we won't be too, too rigid about this, but, you know, we just want to be mindful of the time. Okay. Um, so I will, um, I'm actually, we have somebody on, uh, online, uh, Helen on iPad. I'm going to start with you since you're the only person, uh, right now with your hand raised, um, out there in the. <laughs> All right, Hel uh, Helen. I just asked her to unmute. So, okay. Well, we'll come back. We'll come back to Helen. Um, in the meantime, so um, I'll just go in the order. Uh, we don't always necessarily have signed up for agenda items, but since folks did, um, I will call folks in order that they signed up. Um, Anne, uh, fine. And if you can be sure to state your name um, and say uh, say where you live, that would be great. Okay. Um, so my name is Anne Fine. I live in Northampton uh, in Ward 4. So um, thank you all for the opportunity to offer my opinions on Northampton's lighting ordinance. It appears that decisions are close to being made, and I want to weigh in before it is too late. I have worked as a nurse practitioner 
and nurse midwife for over 30 years. And throughout my career, the physical and emotional consequences of poor sleep have been studied and various remedies proposed. However, the negative impact of nights that are too brightly lit is a factor that cannot be remedi remedied by individual patients and their clinicians. More personally, I have lived in Northampton since 1998. And since moving seven years ago to Ward 4 in the South Street neighborhood, if I don't use an eye shade in addition to pulling down the shades or closing curtains, I do not sleep. My bedroom is bathed in light throughout the night from the street lights around me. Beyond my own disrupted sleep, which I fear may impact my physical and cognitive health as I age, the detrimental effects that two brightly lit nights have on insect and bird life has been well documented. I think that the city can achieve a balance between lighting that provides adequate light to navigate at night, but does not have the harmful effects of our curtain street lights. Others have shared their technical expertise with you about specific fixtures and brightness. And I want to emphasize that blue light, in addition to being detrimental to health, also adds significant glare. I think this is why our sidewalks have become more treacherous to navigate and our streets, to my surprise, are actually poorly and strangely illuminated. Therefore, I urge you to select lighting with the current blue limit of 2700K. This will reduce brightness and glare. Please follow the examples of other towns and cities and take the necessary, necessary measures that will reduce light pollution, improve our sleep, and continue to light our way in the night. As for experienced council members who have heard much testimony, I trust you will educate your newer colleagues and together approve the guidelines for lighting our streets at night that have been recommended by the Northampton Dark Skies Committee. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to go back to Helen and see if she is able to unmute. I'm sorry. So Helen on uh, the on the Zoom, if you are able to unmute, we would hear from you now. Okay. Well. Okay. Well, well, I'll keep coming back to her. In the meantime, um, I will go to uh, Tina White, who is uh, I can see is ready to go. Oh, hey, here you go. Great, thank you. Um, my name is Christina White. I am a um, retired veterinarian. I live in Florence, Massachusetts. I have spoken in front of the city council before. I'm in Ward 7. Um, I really appreciate the work that this committee and the city council is doing for our community. I count our community as the ecosystem. So if we're healthy and the birds are healthy and the insects are healthy and the bats are healthy and the trees are healthy, um, all living beings work together. Um, I strongly urge you to not increase um, to the 3000. There are lots of graphs out there showing the difference between 2700 and 3000 is not small. It's a lot more blue light and um, it's not necessary. There are many communities um, who are ch making the change to 2200 as the maximum. And I believe that Massachusetts is working towards lowering light pollution as a whole. And so even though right now they may have a certain standard, I believe that if Northampton and among other communities leads the way, that um, the standard will be lower and things will be accepted. Um, I think also the fact that we can dim lights when they're 2700 or 2200 or whatever also makes a big difference. So yay that we're planning on doing that. Um, we can do things to make it safe, beautiful, historic and healthy for all our community. Thank you so much. Thank you, Christina. Um, I'm going to bounce back to the room and uh, hear from Jonathan Liebman. Thank you. 
My name is Jonathan Liebman. Um, I live at 25 Monroe Street in Northampton. Um, I'm pleased to have the opportunity to address the, the committee. I've pre previously written to the council members um, multiple times into the mayor's office, so I'll keep my remarks fairly short tonight. Um, we've had many years of discussion now about street lighting and light pollution in the city, and I'm hopeful that we're finally at a moment to move from debate to some real concrete action. Street lighting in the city in the, with a the current high intensity LED lighting is a problem, both in neighborhoods throughout the city and in particularly bright spots such as the I-91 Route 9 um, inner um, rotary. The lighting creates glare, which impairs our ability to see clearly at night. It creates light pollution, which invades our homes. It disturbs our sleep and it obscures the night sky. It degrades the natural environment in ways which are detrimental to the health of plants and animals, including human beings. We are no longer at a point in this discussion where there's much room for debate about that. There's a lot of science about the damage being done each night from the light pollution. There's ample engineering work to guide us in moving forward and improving the lighting. We are asking this committee and the full city council to take action now to change this. And I would recommend, you know, I'm not a technical person, but I think that the less intensity light we have, if it's well positioned, is really the direction we need to go. And we should do that now rather than kicking this down the road more. Thank you. Thank you. There, I try Helen again. Hi, Helen. We're going to, Helen, on the Zoom, we're going to see if. You can, you're ready to, to speak. Okay, we'll come back. <laughs> um, uh, next in the room is uh, uh, Myla, I, Myla Kabat-Zinn. Oh, and, and I know you, and I even, I know you, I'm sorry. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, well, I'm Myla Capitson. I live at 32 Ward Avenue. I've spoken before to legislative matters, and I wrote a letter to city council. Um, so this is not going to take long. But I, I just want to, one last. Um, so, of course, I'm, I'm going to be speaking in support of the lighting ordinance being as strong as it can be. Um, Northampton would benefit greatly from outdoor lighting that is more shielded and that has lights with a warmer, less blue color temperature of 2700. Before I moved here eight years ago, I lived in Lexington, Massachusetts, where I worked for many years on street lighting issues as a member of the Lexington Lighting Options Committee. In that capacity, I became very aware of the huge difference that good outdoor lighting design can make on the quality of life in cities and towns. Effective, well-designed lighting directs the right amount of light where it is needed, reduces light spill and glare, and doesn't interfere with our ability to see whether we are walking or driving. Now that I'm older, I find that my vision is even more negatively affected by glare and light pollution. So I urge you to make our lighting ordinance the strongest that it can be for all of the reasons I've stated above. And I appreciate your working on this. This is such an important issue. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna go to the next on the list and then come back to Helen. Uh, uh, Donald Dornell. Good evening. Um, I'm Don Darnell. Uh, I live on Village Hill in Northampton, where I'm a part of a group of volunteers, the Healthy Lighting Committee. Um, so I'm representing the whole group, I guess, here. Um, uh, and I, you already know I have an engineering background and some experience with lighting, well, outdoor lighting policy at the municipal level. Um, so I just wanted to jump off and uh, nerd out a little bit on the color temperature question, because I think it's something that's pretty, it's not well understood. And so I'm going to show you some charts and <laughs> bear with me. I hope it'll, it'll be of some use to you. Um, I, I do want to say, too, just from my own experience working with uh, this other municipality, that the concerns about needing additional poles if you uh, additional fixtures if you go to if you keep a 2700k cap as opposed to a 300k cap on the color temperature uh, just doesn't 
ring true to me and i'm uh, i'm concerned in the same way about the the backlight standards just understanding a little bit about the bug standards that going up to b3 seems pretty extreme to me um but uh I, so i just want to throw that out there as something we might want to press more of those designers um uh but just on, on the color temperature question so this is a typical spectrum for an led fixture 2700k uh you can see uh, there's a little blue bump here on the blue end of the spectrum. Um, this is near the edge of the visible uh, light spectrum. Um, and it uh, is it just happens to coincide with uh, human circadian sensitivities, the peak of human circadian uh, sensitivity, which kind of covers this area, but is strongest right here. Uh, not the rods and cones in your eyes, but basal ganglion cells on the back of the, of the eye that basically signal to your body to produce serotonin when it's daylight and to produce melatonin when that daylight, daylight fades away. Um, so you take off that 2700K cap, it has a really significant impact in that area. You go to what we would call like more of a, a cool white light. You can see that that spike and substantially, um, I guess I'm, I'm going more slowly. <laughs> Uh, is that three minutes already? It is, but wrap okay. up just a little. Uh, All right, just very quickly. Um, uh, so we're, you're seeing quite a bit more power at that level. Uh, so it's not a trivial difference uh, between 2700K and 3000K as a limit. Uh, the spike goes up very quickly after that. Um, uh, we've spoken a little bit about... Uh, the the areas of impact where there's the consequences of raising that level but i'll just i just want to emphasize the issue of glare blue light um uh, uh diffracts at higher angles than uh the rest of the spectrum it's why the sky is blue um so this will cause glare even when you have pop, proper shielding and for those of us with eyes older than 50 years old that diffraction occurs inside the eye and so it uh magnifies glare effects, uh, both the discomfort glare that we get, uh, but also the impairment to visibility, which I'm driving puts me at greater risk uh, when those lights are on of, uh, you know, not being able to see small points like pedestrians, people on bicycles, that sort of thing. So I just think it's a really important issue to, to move on. Like I said, our group really supports this uh, this soreness that's before you um, with the exceptions of the two tweaks that were mentioned, this 2700K cap being compromised and the backlight uh, issue for the central core. We just think those are, those are decisions that we would regret long-term. Uh, thanks for letting me push the time. No problem, thank you. All right, I'm gonna try Helen again. Helen on the Zoom, are you available to speak? Okay, I will come back. Um, James Lowenthal. Good evening, I'm James Lowenthal, 11181 Crescent Street. Um, thank you for the uh, the hard work, um, Director Mish and uh, members of city council. And uh, thank you for the transparency and the the um, the communication and the ability to uh, to the opportunity to weigh in extensively and continuously on this uh, longstanding issue. Um, we appreciate that there. I appreciate that there are there are multiple factors uh, uh, bearing on the decisions that you have to make. Um, but my punchline is that I don't see the evidence. That changing, that loosening the restriction from 2,700K to 3,000K will actually save money. And I don't see the evidence that loosening the restriction on backlighting will make light any better or be any cheaper. About half of our light pollution comes from our street lights. So we're talking about a significant amount of light. And as the previous speaker mentioned, it's actually quite a significant difference. It sounds small between 2,700K and 3,000. But that that blue light is really critical for all the reasons that uh, that Don mentioned. Um, for example, uh, the the business of, of the you know why is the sky blue? The sky is blue because blue light scatters much more strongly in the atmosphere. In fact, 
that difference between 2,700K and 3,000, it adds up to about a 50% difference in scattering of, of blue light in the in the sky. So sky glow will be worse with 3,000K than with 2,700K. We'll see fewer stars. We'll see, see less Milky Way. And animals and people will be disrupted, disrupted more. Their health will be negatively affected more. 2,700K is actually the most common color currently chosen by communities across Massachusetts. It's uh, It used to be 2000K when we all had high pressure sodium lights. When the when LEDs came out, they were 5000K and some cities and towns adopted them and then had to spend sometimes millions of dollars ripping them out because people hated them so much. Then there were 4000 and there were 3000, which is what we have. But now there are cities and towns putting in 2200K, including towns and cities bigger and smaller than Northampton. Uh, including some here in Massachusetts, they're available. And, and 2700K is actually the most common uh, uh, kind that is installed with state aid in, in Massachusetts right now. Uh, so I just don't see the evidence uh, that it's going to be more expensive. In fact, uh, some cities and towns, for example, Pepperell found that 2200K was actually the cheapest option for them. Uh, in a, a blind test, so-called blind test, that um, they just asked the public to uh, evaluate a number of demonstrations. They chose 2200K, turned out to be the least expensive uh, model. The town actually saved additional money in addition to the, the energy savings. Uh, likewise, for the, the bug ratings, the backlighting, uplighting, and glare, the current Main Street 25% plan, um, which I've been discussing with Director Mish, um, it provides up to 0.2 foot candles illumination is it okay if I just finish this point? Thank you. Um, across uh, all the streets, all the sidewalks, up to the, the building, that uh, 0.2 foot candles is more than adequate to see safely for pedestrians. And that is done in the current plan um, with lights that have bug ratings of um, only, uh, backlighting of only two. So I don't see any reason to loosen that. I don't see any need. I haven't seen any quantitative arguments that loosening that is actually needed. I think we can, you know, if the light's shining in your eyes, you don't make it better by shining more light in your eyes. You make it better by by directing the light where it needs to go, which is down on the ground, not into people's eyes. And um, so I think it can be done beautifully and uh, safely and historically uh, while, uh, while also protecting uh, human health and wildlife and the built environment and the night sky. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, uh, David, um, uh, <laughs> your handwriting, I think, uh, Zendenberg. Close enough. Okay. <laughs> it's Seidenberg. That was pretty, that's bad. It's, it was fine. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, I'm of course, uh, here in support of the lighting ordinance. I want to say, I don't understand why we're not trying for 2200. If that's a possibility and a good thing to do. And I'd also like to see an ordinance that encourages people, even if it doesn't require them, to go to a lower temperature rating, to providing some incentive or something to try to be at 2200. Maybe they have to write a letter to ask to be able to do 2700. 2200 is better. Uh, I understood this from an astronomy perspective and an ecology perspective for most of the time. I also managed to get a concussion during the pandemic uh, lockdown and discovered that it's also important for other reasons uh, for people to negotiate the world. So mostly I'm over those symptoms, but not entirely, and it still sometimes bothers me. So I would encourage you to even go further. Don't go up to 3,000. If there's an issue with, with the Mass Dot program and we won't get funding if you don't go up to 3,000, wait till you have to cross that bridge before you go cross it. Don't put, don't put it in now. Those are the things I would say. Um, the other thing is, I'd like to see some way of getting this applied to existing lighting, like, for example, the stop and shop parking lot. So I, from an astronomy perspective, before the new streetlights were in, I could block the streetlights with my hands and look up straight from Prospect Street and always see the Milky Way when the sky was clear. I can't do that anymore with the new streetlights, even though they're so much better than every other city around here. Yeah, so I'd, I'd like to see that. I've never been able to see the stars going, looking in the... Uh, east northeast direction because that's where the stop and shop parking light is so i'd like to see all those things even better and i but i do think that what you're doing is good thank you thank you and now it really is helen's last chance <laughs> <laughs> i did send an email to her okay 
I'm going to uh, ask Helen to unmute one more time. Um, I like to imagine that Helen has gone off to have dinner. <laughs> and <Are you> funny? <laughs> I am, I am. Okay. We will be here if, if uh, she, she uh, makes herself uh, known and, and we still have an opportunity to hear from her. I'll certainly be happy to, to do that. So, um, so with that, um, I guess I would have um, Director Mish back a couple of questions, and then we can follow up with some of the questions raised um, by the comments. Hi, um, I, uh, Carolyn, and we're informal here. We decided that last term, so I guess we'll just keep with that. Is that okay? <laughs> Um, so Carolyn, um, I am, I, can you speak to the, the decision about the, the two versus three or on the, the, the sidewalks downtown and that revision? I know you summarize it, but could you speak a little bit more to that and speak to those, the questions raised? Sure. So, um, um, again, this is information from our lighting designer about sort of the the spread of light, if you choose a two, it's going to be more sort of ovular as opposed to circular when it's distributing the light um, based on the lighting types that are available. Um, when you go, when you're at a two, it'll be sort of elongated as opposed to sort of more round. Um, so, but at a three, you can Ex that expands a little bit more to make it rounder on the back side. Um, uh, the numbers are also, I mean, actually, um, James sent me uh, some lots of names of people to contact, um, including a designer who ended up designing um, the standards for um, Salt Lake City. I don't know how good they are in general, but um, they they had um, guidance for wide streets. And as you can imagine, the Wild West, there's lots of wide streets out there. <laughs> um, so those, the, the um, bug standards for streets were based on those widths and the comparable width actually to Main Street that was in this guidance was a bug rating of three, uplight of zero, and a glare factor of three. So um, they're a little bit higher on the glare rating, but I think for us, the uh, my um, interest in the looking at the three based on our designers um, suggesting that is because of that wider sidewalk and because of the total width of Main Street up to 100 feet wide total. So um, that's really where that has come from. And that... Um, um yeah so that's all i have to say on that piece thank you anybody else have any questions or follow-up um, rachel sorry <laughs> finally coming <laughs> i know you said you're not going to vouch for me so i guess i'll be seeing you later um <laughs> <laughs> kind of, so you're saying because they're wider, so you're saying it would be insufficient if you went down the the. Uh, um, it won't it won't go as far back. Um, is that an issue? on this like this? What's the issue with that? You're it could be for lighting and making enough that? illumination. Yes, I and mean, the other thing is these lights all have um, the ability to put shields in so if there are certain locations that that may be narrower that might need a back shield you can do that mm -hmm. um and of course as i mentioned and is in the code draft code um they're going to be set to dim 50 percent, and we can decide what time that is that that happens um but yes the idea is that you've got coverage to the back of the sidewalk with light and and just to, to be clear, when you say back sidewalk, you mean back toward the the buildings, toward the doorways and right. Okay, so the storefronts, yeah. right? And and so can all the can the oblong and the circular the different lights they all can be have shields on them potentially? Is there a different? Yeah, um, yeah. I'm curious. Oh. Yeah. 
You're like, Alex is making a move. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Okay. All right. Well, while Alex thinks. Um, I also want to um just sort of go back to something that James mentioned about the 25% design lighting. Um that was really a placeholder submitted to say, hey guys, we were gonna intend to put lighting in our plan. So there wasn't a lot of thought put into that plan for 25%. That's not typically when you see a submittal for lighting, but because we've been having this conversation with MassDOT wanting them to cover this, that we wanted to at least get a plan sheet in there. Thank you. All right, I thought. <laughs> Very good. So it's my understanding that lighting, um, when you have a fixture, and you're, most of the fixtures generally direct the light downward. Um, and to a certain extent outward, the backlighting would allow for more of that to be outward. But that that will increase the glare um, in terms of, you know, I'm, I'm walking in this area, I'm going to see that, <clears throat> I'm going to be able to, you know, see that that bulb will be coming at me for a greater area than um, if things just went downward. How and and that the more glare there is, the or rather the less glare there is, the more that the eye is able to see the differences between you know the areas right because you have the area where the light is brightest, and then as you move outward, you have the area that is. Um, dimmer, but if there isn't any glare, your eye is able to make, to negotiate those differences well. Um, <clears throat> so my concern would be, are we increasing the amount of glare um, when we could be um, making sure that there's, when there is less glare, there it is, it will be easier to negotiate differences in light. Um. So uh, I think that um, there is a potential for, and so when, and when you're talking about that light distribution, there are, so the primary light source is focused down. And so the greater that value of, of backlight or glare, and glare we're saying is maintaining it too, but there'll be, um, a greater percentage of the light will be distributed a little bit higher up behind the light. And um, I suppose that could create more glare, but there's also, there's, there's different sort of, um, there's different wedges essentially in this whole cone. So you're going to, the higher um, the, the, factor the the rating you're going to have more level at that high uh, uh, more light sorry at that level that's sort of more close to being horizontal um so in that sense you have more i guess lumens in that in that higher level but even with a three it's not going to be as though you just have a flat cut off um as we as the current standard is um, but I suppose you could argue, yes, that any, any time you're increasing those values, you'll have that level, that cone essentially will be elevated a little bit more. So you might have more of that, um, that might be bothersome, but I can, I don't know at what point it's going to be hard for you to transition from one side. I mean, the whole point of having a, a, a doing the whole photometric plan for the entire area, parking lot, you know, residential lot street is to make sure that you're not over lighting it, but having as much even um, distribution as possible to make it as safe as possible. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Rachel, this may be a question for all of you who uh, served on legislative matters, but um, to the, David's point, um, you landed, was 2700 about costs? 
I know we're talking about 2,700 versus 3,000, but uh, where did you even get the 2,700 versus 2,200? Or that might be a Carolyn question. Or might be um, you know. um, 2,700 was the the number initially. The difference between 27, the planning board, um, some members of the planning board raised the question about the cost and 3,000. So that's why. So that that was the change. It right. came to us as 27. So it was never lower than twenty seven hundred. No, no. Was, it, was there? Is that just about? I think there was a. It was there was a discussion about availability mm -hmm. um, and cost related to that availability. Um, the other thing to know is so, and to speak to some of the other comments is this lighting is for going forward. You know, it's not going to. You can't zoning can't dictate that people make a change on their property. Um, for a new standard. So it's just whenever people are transitioning to a different light fixture, that's when it'll come into place or um, be implemented. Um, so the, um, I'm sorry, it was, uh, so the other piece of it is that um, there was a, cons uh, that, as the technology changes, we can also go in and just extract that piece. Instead of opening up the whole ordinance, we could just say, okay, you know what? It's This is all readily available now throughout for residential development, for commercial development. Um, let's keep ratcheting that number down and, and that you can easily go in and just substitute it. And so I think, but the main conversation is why I understand it was presented. It was introduced as 2,700 and... Um, you know, I think those are readily available at a residential scale for sure. And then there was this conversation about whether that's re as readily available for commercial applications. I'm sorry. I so when you say ratchet down, you mean we'd amend we'd have to amend the ordinance each time, though, right? Well, right now it says zero to twenty seven hundred. If you wanted to keep that, so so uh, again to that point of are there any incentives to go lower? Well, there's a range, and there's always going to be a top end of the range. But if you want to lower that top end of the range, so it's zero to twenty two hundred or zero to two thousand as the technology changes, that will be there. But that there, that availability, of, of course, is here in the current form. Thank you. Yeah. Eric? Yes. Um, so I was, I was reviewing some of the other legislative matters meetings. And so thank everybody for all the work that you guys have done. I'm still trying to wrap my head around some of the lighting, um, the, the numbers for things. And I know, James, you had offered to do a site walk because that's the best thing. And I I won't take you up on that. Uh, so put that on the table. But I'm just wondering, could you just explain in, in kind of layman's terms how much more coverage you get from a two to a three? Is there like in a distance backlighting is that is that a because i'm trying to I mean, it's going to depend on the fixture so there's a lot there are a lot of factors that go into it um uh so i don't think you can just pick one uh, and, but you know i think there's a range and then um i think that's yeah that's all i have to say about that i guess Yes. Um, I I see that James had his hand up, and uh, I would like to ask, with your permission, sure. if he is a could respond to that question. Oh, no, that's okay. I, if you if you just want to just just tell us some. Just, uh, yeah. In response to to that question, the um, the definition of backlighting is very similar to the definition of glare. Um, both of them are how much light is coming out at these different wedges, as as, uh, as Carolyn said, different wedges uh, from horizontal down towards vertical. Just that glare is, is um, if the street is here, I'm on the street light, the buildings are behind me, glare is forward, backlighting is 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 backwards. Uh, but as, as Alex said, backlighting could um, certainly affect any pedestrian walking along the sidewalk as well. Um, this is a, a model, a, a picture showing these different wedges. The difference between B2 and B3 is over a factor of two. The, uh, this table shows what the different uh, levels from B0 up to B5 mean. Each level um, 
describes how many lumens, which is the amount of light coming out of the bulb, uh, is allowed to come out within these different uh, uh, elevation wedges, either forward for glare or backward for backlighting. The case of B2, uh, I'm reading from the, the, this table is from the Illuminating Engineering Society, it's the definition of the bug rating. B2 allows uh, 1,000 lumens in the, the highest, uh, close to horizontal, 2,500 in the next one down, 1,000 in the next one down. Uh, so, and that covers the whole range from um, 30 up to 90 degrees. Uh, that's a total of 4,500 lumens coming out as backlighting, 4,500 for B2. B3 allows more than twice that, 10,000 lumens coming out in those zones. But to put that in perspective, 10,000 lumens, that is more than five times the brightness, the entire brightness of 85% of the streetlights in Northampton. 85% of the streetlights in Northampton have a total lumens of only 1,900 lumens, less than 2,000 lumens. We're talking about 10,000 lumens coming out all just as backlighting. So it's a very significant amount of light. And... Um, it, what the table doesn't show is a direct answer to your question. Well, how far does that go? That can be seen for you know from outer space. The question is, what's the illumination that it provides? And then, as Carolyn said, well, it depends on the fixture and exactly. There, there are many, many variables that will go into um, exactly what that's going to turn into in terms of the the illumination level, which we measure in foot candles on the sidewalk. And um, all that it, that it says specifically is how much light comes out of the fixture in those different wedges. And it, it trans, it, it, it's never a good thing. Uh, the, whole defin, the whole reason for doing the bug ratings is uh, to, uh, to allow for flexibility for many different uh, scenarios, but it never says you should put this amount of light. It's just how much you're allowed to put out. Backlighting and glare is never a good thing. It's always, well, we're allowing it because, you know, there are some extenuating circumstances of some sort or another. It's never a recommendation that you put it out there. Thank you. Thanks. Jake, Thank you. Uh, the total number of, let's say, 2,000, you're saying, at the, the, the back light, that's also based on how powerful your, how many, how powerful your light is to get, right? If you have a lower, um, uh, a fixture with less lumens coming out, then you're not going to have <laughs> That's correct. That's right. You, you could have this exactly this and just turn turn the dial down on the brightness. Yeah. And you could move from a B3 to a B2 to a B1 without changing the distribution of light at all, just because there are less lumens yeah. coming out everywhere. Right. Is that what you meant? Yeah. Yeah. Um, does anybody have any more questions for Carolyn? <laughs> I yeah, hold on, let me compose myself and see what else do. Uh Carolyn, I have a question for you. Uh so am I um am I understanding just at a sort of a seems like a, a just sort of a basic level, the backlighting on these um if the point is is to to spread backwards back toward the building, so so a the backlighting is sort of by definition in almost every case going to be blocked by the building. Am, am I reading understanding that correctly? I mean, yeah. I'm not. I know that there's glare. Well, and that's glare, but the backlighting, the pool of light that we're talking about being backlighting is going extend. We're concerned about what's extending back across the sidewalk and yeah. and into the building. Is, yeah, am I correct about that? Right. Okay. And so for the most part, there'll be a build on Main Street, for example, because we have um, all the building facades right up to the back of the sidewalk, then yes, the buildings will be there. Right. Well, and sort of to the extent the final the, the, the suggestion that it be three in this in just in this um, uh, just in this district is is the downtown district. Right. And we're talking about the wider sidewalks with the with right. The, right so right okay i just wanted to make sure i understood that yeah the, the point actually is is to extend more light across the, the side right
All right, I have a, I have a thing. <laughs> I, had to, I had to double check. I was looking through the notes from before because I see you guys had sort of addressed lights turning off after a business is closed. There was yep. a lot of discussion about that. Yep. One thing that stood out to me, just because it's my wheelhouse, is the festival fair requirement of temporary lights turning off an hour after the, the event closes. I worked a number of festivals where, uh, you know, when you're bringing in heavy, like a lot of sound equipment, lights and stuff, you're going to leave security there afterwards and often want to leave a few lights on for for that purpose of having... Or breaking down the... Or not not just breaking down, but having someone, if it's a, say, for instance, two-day festival, you've got thousands of dollars of equipment, you're going to want some lights on. And, and um, has that been thought of in terms of... I think there's a provision in there for motion sensor activation after that, but maybe that is a different section. I can pull up the, okay. I don't have the texts on my computer. So it should be, so I think the idea that um, it might not fit for everybody was incorporated to allow sort of turn off, but you can have a motion sensor. So if someone shows up to take equipment, yeah. the lights will yeah. come on. I, but just make sure it's there. I yeah, I'll, 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 we have another, I have another swing at this. Okay. So I will go, okay. go back. That's on page nine, number three. And there, it is, there isn't an exception. There is not. There, it, it just says must be turned off one hour after the event closes. Okay. So, um, I, but we had it then in maybe another section for businesses. Maybe it was in the business section. I'm just going to pull it up. Well, it's the so the festival and fair, the temporary outdoor lighting or exempt. Okay. Um, although the permanent lighting ought to, you know, that the targets. Yeah, that that does have a a, a timer. So, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Alex. Um, I see uh, in section four. Part E, control. All non-residential sight lights must be turned off one hour after close of business. However, lights may be set to motion controls after close of business so long as they are timed to turn off five minutes after motion is detected. I would imagine a festival or a fair is a non-residential sight, non-residential sight light, so that that could be uh, considered. Um. Well. It Actually, I think it would be better to put it in that because it falls under exemptions. Um, so it's treated differently. So uh, um, I think, you know, it might make sense just to copy that same language to um, three, so, you know, item. I don't know why it goes six, one, two, three, or e code will fix that. But um, the, you know, sub paragraph three that talks about festivals and fairs. Temporary lights for festivals and fairs must be turned off one hour after the event closes for the day and just maybe add that same language for motion control. Probably makes sense. Yep. You have you have that for later for an amendment. Okay. <laughs> Any thing else? Any other questions before I Okay. I have one account. I realized and sort of this scramble to fix where we, you know, merge everything that had been changed. Um, the version, if you were to choose to keep a separate line item for CB core and HB in terms of the bug rating, um, the average foot candle should just be the same for foot candles. Um, it's blank right now. That was not intentional. Okay. Did you get that one? Yeah. Okay. Um, do you have anything else that you want to share with us or anything else a question to address? Okay. Um, sure, James. What? Thanks. Um, Carolyn, actually about exactly that same table, I have a question, uh, and I'm not uh, sure. If... We're not going to. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Sorry. I mean, if you want to ask her, you know, give her a call tomorrow, or if you want to pose a question to us and if we want to follow up. Okay. Thanks. Um, then I will pose the question to you. Okay. Um, the current version says uh, on table, the table on page nine in, in section five, street lights, um, uh, the column heading is maximum average foot candle. And I'm just wondering if that's supposed to be just maximum foot candle. 
So right now it says maximum foot candle of four for um, FV Center, for Florence Center, 3.5 for CB side, et cetera. Uh, uh, Carolyn just pointed out that there's a there's a missing box, but my question is about the units or, or the, the, the title at the top. Is it actually supposed to be maximum average? If it's maximum average of say four foot candles- And you should have an end one- It could be a million over here and that would not be good. And right. As so long as- a good question. Average. Great. Thank you. I think that's another thing that came out of that public hearing <laughs> that we uh, was supposed to be modified. And I don't know, they, there's so many versions of the program. I think that was a mistake. So I'm just going to go back and look for it in a minute. Okay. Uh, I mean, I mean, I I totally get Dr. Lowenthal's point. <laughs> it seems like average could should just be struck because there will just be that one. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Oh. So we're striking average from that, and you'll you'll we'll, um, fill in the blanks and the other things. Um, are there okay? Any other questions of of Carolyn while while we're here? Okay. Um, I I'm going to ask one more time if Helen would like to speak, and then I'd like a I'd, I'd ask for a motion to close the public hearing. So Helen, if you're here, we'd love to hear from you. <laughs> she, I'm hoping she has a nice glass of Chianti. I know, yeah. So, <laughs> all right. Um, so still, still no word from Helen. Um, can do a, have a motion to close the public hearing? Move to close the public hearing. I second that. Uh, all in favor? Say aye. 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 Uh, I'll post, any post? No. All right. Um, I forgot to ask for a discussion, but that's because we're now going to discuss. <laughs> um, I am kind of thinking um, because of the the extensive work that has been done, I'm I'm going to try to guide the discussion a little bit to the um, to a to take into um, consideration our new counselors who are new to this committee, um, just to open it up to see if there's anything that you guys want to discuss that wasn't changed that you know kind of came in you know with the old and then maybe we could go um and go through each of the three changes um to discuss you know those things you know but to just to close out the discussion does if that makes sense to folks um so with that um i and of course uh, the you know those of us who were here for for round one of this um certainly you know, can pipe in if they have anything. But um, is there anything about the existing, um, about the ordinance as it sort of came in at the end of last year, at the end of the last term that we discussed that is sort of lingering? I mean, Garrick, you brought up the the, the festival lighting issue, which was a good point. Um, does anybody have any particular things they'd like to raise about the kind of the where we started? Rachel. Oh yeah. No, 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 it's okay. I was, I got, I got, I gathered. I, you know, I, I appreciate how much work this has been because we've been talking about it for years too. And, um, but yeah, I just want to name that. I think it's, you know, the 2700 versus, um, lower, you know, I, I think lighting is, it's, this is all a very uh, scientific, um, conversation and technical conversation, but it's actually kind of emotional. And what I see is that people have a perception about safety and there's not always um, the data to back that up. And, you know, I, I would, I see how we got here, but I do think it's good practice to really um, do, really, really do as much as we can in terms of lighting pollution, because I think the, I think that the, I think we tend to settle in a place that's more comfortable for people, but maybe it's really, it's not always, the, you know, it's not always necessary to have it that bright, but it's kind of a good settling point. It's not enough for me. I'm very excited about this ordinance and I really want to get there. So it's not a breaking point for me, but I do think if this were going to, if we, you know, continue to have lighting discussions, I really want to push the envelope a little bit more. Alex? Uh, we're still just talking about the previous version. Yeah, the previous version. Okay, I'm I'm happy with the previous version. Um, in ter you know that that's where we we left okay. it at the end of our December 11th meeting. Um, 
Um, I'm sorry, you were I'm just <laughs> anticipating. Oh. Uh, um, so, okay. Um, well, and that kind of uh, leads, Rachel's comment uh, leads us to the first of the the sort of big changes, which is the 20, uh, the 2,700 versus 3,000. Um, and um, I, uh, and I wonder if we can talk about that. So the, it's just the, for the, the central business district or, or the, sorry, streetlights. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and other than that's not changed. So it's sort of a compromise between the planning board's um, recommendation and the previous. Um, so if I can, folks have thoughts about that. Alex. Yeah, I'm happy to go. Um, so in my, in, you know, what I've learned, uh, it's clear to me that the 2700 is, is, is a better policy decision, um, in terms of, you know, uh, it, it is, a, it has a significant difference. It is better for humans. It is better for animal health. It's better for sky glow. Um, so all things being equal, we want to go to that lower number. So I think we're establishing a policy that could last decades. You know, once these fixtures are installed, um, the, you know, the bulbs can last a decade. I think that's what we're seeing with our current street lights. They, they thought it might be 20 years, but it's more like decade. But um, there's no requirement, at least in the current zoning, we could always change this. There's no requirement that we, that when you change a bulb, you go up, or I mean, you go down. Uh, probably it was the way we want to do it in the future. Um, so, so it could be decades. Um, and I feel uncomfortable basing uh, a, a long-term policy on an unknown, um, a financial unknown of uh, whether the state will pay for our downtown redesign. Um, and I. Uh, if if we're gonna do such a compromise, um, I think we need actual numbers. And I want to point out that there is an avenue for relief, um, which is a planning board site plan. Um, it's it's sort of mentioned for the bug rating explicitly, and and I support that the addition of that. Um, it's also at the very top. Um, we have a uh, you know that. The planning board can explicitly grant a waiver through site plan, plan approval for lighting that does not conform to these standards. Um, uh, however, these goals and our our goals uh, above um, are and safety is one of those goals to provide lighting where necessary, but not more than required for visibility. Um, uh, it, so that we we have an avenue, um, and then that that can be an avenue when we have more information. Um, you know, if, if we're if we're at a place where uh, the 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 state is saying, well, we're not going to pay for it unless you do this plan, um, then perhaps you know we we want to make those changes. The planning board could make those changes. We could also make those changes, though we would have to go through a longer public hearing process. Um, so so that so I feel uncomfortable make making long-term policy changes um, uh, on unknowns. And I, since I, I do think that 2,700 is the right number, um, that, that, but so that's, that's my feeling uh, about specifically the color temperature. Thank you. Derek. Yeah. So I, thank you, Alex, for that. I, I'm going to mirror a lot of your statements is that I, I also feel like it's, it's, not good uh, policy to make big plans because of, due to an unknown. Um, and there is a way in which we can change that. Um, I think that also as counselor or Rachel said that we should really try and make a statement and going with the lower number really shows that we are listening and we are trying to plan for the future. Um, so I, I would, I'd be hesitant without a lot more evidence of moving up to 3000. Um, and that's, that's kind of where I am is that I think the, the 2,700 work, but also I, I want to go out and, and do some walking, see some stuff. So Rachel, I know I was just curious about the light bulbs. I thought we were going to have them 
Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, we did bring uh 2700 and a 3000 light bulb. There's also a little display that shows 5000, 4000 and 3000. Um I I mean I personally think it's it's interesting. Um but anecdotal or yeah, it's a little anecdotal <laughs> because we're we're not seeing a plan. We're yeah. not seeing this outdoors where it is intended. Um so you know anyone in the audience is or or here I'm certainly welcome to try them out Can somebody turn out the lights turn those lights on and turn on, <laughs> do a brief i like the drama but it's on that's good. i know <laughs> are they actually plugged in they're plugged in there is a black background uh to place behind them if that's helpful <laughs> is that dramatic enough yes <laughs> thank you got a big key on there's a lot of yeah. cords. I'm yeah. putting you in charge. Yeah. I think Lara knows which one's 2700 and which one's. I'm bringing a mic, so. They can... Yeah, this is the 2700, the squatter bulb here. There's the package if anyone wants to <laughs> confirm that. Yeah. You know, I know, I'm doing it. Yeah. So the one on the left is the. Uh, Three? This is 3,000 and this 2,700. You see it's got a little bit of a warmer glow. Yeah. 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 I mean, it actually looks brighter than 2,700. Yeah. But well, we don't know what the lumens are. It's not a question of brightness. It's just the color. Right. Yeah. The color. Yeah. 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 I see it, though. Well, I see it. Whiter is that there's a little bit more blue light in the spectrum. I actually have with me. I'm not going to bring out the little gizmo you can look through and see the spectrum. You'll see this one has water. I'm curious if they stare at an eclipse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, examples of 5,000, uh, 4,000, and 3,000. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that. that difference is very clear. Yeah. Um, well, that was a, that was a lovely demonstration, <laughs> um, and helpful. Um, I think that started in the middle of your comments. Did you have more comments? I haven't, I have no there. Okay. No, I just want to validate, you know, I, I really, it's, it's not a little thing about, you know, getting reimbursed for those light lighting because the, the the subtext is something we're going to have to pull the money from something else and then it becomes so i'm i want to name that i'm not i don't think it's trivial but i i do get worried about a policy i was thinking about can we amend if we need to but the site plan idea is much better you know then if if we make it 2700 and we get in a jam you know can we make an exemption that's very specific around this um you know, that's maybe more of a le legislative question, but I, I I do think it's, I, you know, I, I see, I see the bind, but I, I have the same um, instinct as, you know, as um, Garrick and Alex, which is that, you know, this is policy and it, it makes me uncomfortable as well to, to go with 3000 for that reason. But I do validate that it is, that cost is important because it will come from somewhere else if we have to, but it is a little vague right now. Um, so I, so I would like, so this kind of gets into the third issue. That's a, a change, um, where, where, uh, the, the 2,700 versus 3,000. Oh, actually this was, uh, so is the waiver, the, so the waiver section, does that apply to the three 2,700 versus 3,000? Um, the the one I was quoting from is at the very top. It applies to the entirety of the ordinance, right? Okay, and it's yeah. uh, it's already uh, proposed, or you know, in the right. Uh, sorry, what page is that? Um, first page, and uh, right after the list, it's all standards right. within this section. And even though the hearing's been closed, we can still ask Carolyn questions. Uh, we just can't. Right. We just have to recognize her. Yeah. Um, and so my thought on that is that 
Um, I agree that it is a meaningful difference that um, that and that we should as aspire to. Um, I think um, I think my concern, though, is that um, that maybe our concern about this potential like blowback from the state on this specific project, because I also agree that it's a big project. You know, we've all gone, you know, we've all you know, we made a big commitment to this. So, I mean, you know, but I, I am a little troubled by the idea that one project then sort of dictating the, the long-term policy um, is, seems a little, uh, I'm a little, I'm troubled by that. I wonder if we can um, add into the waiver language and you have it under the, the bug standards a little more specific. And that was, I think, in response to... Planning board member Tate's and White Hills uh, extensive like, but how do we, and and I can speak to having been on the planning board and you know of how do we this is you you tell us we we've, we've got planning board's got very little discretion actually, and so when we say there's a waiver and there's not any guidance, so they were looking for guidance on that. So I think that the 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 expanded language um, after the bug language um, after the bug rating. Um, after section five of the street lights, but then also more generally, I wonder if it would um, work to include in the waiver um, section a something along the lines of uh, a, a, a basis for a waiver is demonstrable and specific, um, you know, uh, financial, you know, and, and maybe it can be limited to you know, detriment to the city, not, you know, developers have to deal with it. But if, if this, if this, if it affects city or state municipal. funding, yeah. municipal funding, municipal, <laughs> no, you're, you know, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> um, people feel like that might, uh, if we included some language and I would recognize, uh, Carolyn, I'd appreciate your input, um, of this as a potential solution. Um, sure. I mean, I think, that's fine. I'd love to go to another public hearing with the planning board over about Main Street. Okay. So that's a problem. <laughs> um, Would this trigger that separate from? Not necessarily. I mean, okay. we don't know. We The fact of the matter is we don't know what the response is. And it could be, as Rachel said, it could be they're like, yeah, we're not paying for your lights. Go find your own money. Um, anyway, no matter what they are. Um, so... But I think maybe what you could do is just that box that was added, maybe that text could just more specifically relate to streetlights. So um, the more specificity in, and um, instead of saying the above table that, you know, waivers from the streetlight standards may be granted by the planning board after a site plan review procedure, if and only if necessary, blah, 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 blah. blah. And then you can add whatever, <laughs> if you wanted to add more words to that, I guess that probably wasn't so good to put on Zoom, but I think you don't, I mean, just et cetera, <laughs> <Blah, blah>, blah. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, and so maybe that covers, then it just is speaking to the streetlight section. Um, waiver, add something about municipal projects, something, okay. But the, the streetlight section is about, I mean, this is about public streetlights. Uh, I'm sorry. Let me just go back up here. No, it's all streetlights, streets, rights of ways. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it could be waivers in the standards for um, public streets or public ways in this section may be granted. In the, in the Sorry. No, in the spectrum management section, it looks like there is a some work. I'm looking at one of the, I don't know which version I am, but in D, emission of light by all luminaries and all lighting except street lights must have a correlated color temperature. And then at the end, street lights on public ways may have CCT of up to 3,000. Am I looking at the, that's not. Right. So it sounds like you're talking about striking those exceptions. And then instead, instead of adding, adding, putting public ways down in that um, waiver box. Okay. Alex? Uh, can we just talk about that language a little bit in the waiver box? So you proposed something like 
waivers from streetlight standards may be granted by the planning board. Or, or I think, uh, or public street lights. Uh, as opposed to the, the few that are on um, private ways? Yeah. Okay, I see. So waivers from public streetlights or waivers from streetlight standards on public ways mm -hmm. may be granted by the planning mm -hmm. board. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, and could I just point out uh, a Scrivener's thing? I just want to, while we have it, a section five streetlights. Um, it's a street, it, the second sentence, streetlights, and then everything's crossed out and period. And then mm -hmm. street light applications may not exceed 90 degrees and meet the following. So I think that th that those words street lights should also be struck. Uh, page eight. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, do you have anybody? I just have a question about the waiver idea. So does that, if, if if the planning board can do the waiver, I mean, do we give them stipulations about, can they just waive it for any reason? Or, I mean, the reason to be, to waive it would be a significant, you know. Right. Well, so on page nine in the box, it is the, um, that here it's if and only if necessary to improve pedestrian safety. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, or modifications. And I would suggest and I guess rather than try to smith it here, uh, that um, I maybe uh, a non quorum of us, maybe Alex and I, if you want to. Um, uh, but uh, I, I think it would be good to put in just a little bit of language to to have a um, you know if we get if word comes down from on high that the difference between getting funding and not getting funding is this. I I, I really want somebody something short of legislation to be able to to weigh in and consider whether or not an, a waiver uh, exception could be made. Um, I'd rather be on a, you something know, like based on a, a standard that is yeah, like okay. a ton of money, it's going to cost the city a ton of money and it's yeah. specific and it's demonstrable and we know yeah. um, mm -hmm. is that there is a a place and a planning board seems like the appropriate place to, to do that. Um, rather than sort of rewriting legislation or yeah. doing special legislation to exempt. Right. Um, so, uh, so, so that would be my suggestion. We, I guess we could put Laura, you and I, I guess we, we could put a proposal for, for some language that addresses that municipal ex exception, you know, that municipal extraordinary, extraordinary. cost. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just was going to say, I'm sorry. No, it's going to, I'm sorry. No, um, I was just going to say, you know, I, I that really feels good to me because, I mean, this is, you know, everything's related, right? And in theory, I'm not saying, you know, we, we, this was exactly what would happen, but that's if it's a lot of money, one thing that's been identified by the you know, by um, lighting advocates is the need for education, which is a, is kind of relatively low hanging fruit in terms of monetarily. And if you spent even a fraction of that just educating residents, um, and it might be cut, frankly worth the cost difference of of that little bit more to get the lights that are less expensive. And you know, I'm just saying that you know, um, I think there's there's other ways to you know, kind of attack lighting pollution, and they they cost money. And one of them that's really, I think, underutilized and, and cost effective is education of residents, because we can't, for, you know, frankly, we can't, we're not going to and can't force residents to do things. But I just know personally what's happened when someone points something out to me, it's just like, oh, you know, it's just something that didn't consider. And then you just say, hey, you know, that's, you know, that's going to hurt some birds flying by. And I'm like, OK, I'll put a new <laughs> light. You know, I'm just thinking that's something I would like to see happen anyway. And um not to guarantee that money, but I I think money we do need to talk about money. That's that's part of being you know on council. So yeah, I think yeah I think that there is a a a a line between you know if you know it'd be specific and we know for sure it's it's happening and it's going to cost the city money and then from there we ought to you know make a decision because the other thing too that would happen in that situation is if the planning board declined to 
to give the waiver and it would probably what trigger a financial order and you know the money would have to come from somewhere so council would get it one way or the other um but in the meantime design costs could go up expenses could go up you know the the you know thing thing the project would move along in ways that could could be expensive so i could see like you said it all fits together but um so all that to be said um i i would propose putting in um including um, something in the waiver box for the streetlights that included um, something about extraordinary costs to the city. Um, if people are comfortable with that, I don't need to work with somebody on it. I could propose something and you can put it in and council could like it or not like it. Mm -hmm. um, Alex. So I think, well, we should also talk about the bug standards. Um, I would like the same process to be to be used the the, the waivers um, because the backlight, the glare, those which are the same thing, just which direction. Um, we want to minimize that. Two zero two is the the better choice given in the best of circumstances, and I understand there may be exemptions. Um, and we there may be needs uh, regarding width, but when you add glare, you remember you lose eye sensitivity, um, and ideally we find a balance where there is sufficient um, <clears throat> there's sufficient lighting, even though there's a variation in the lighting as it as it you know extends toward the buildings, um, but if there's less glare then you're able to see the difference and it does not seem like there's too little lighting. Um, that is the ideal in any good lighting design. Um, and if there needs to be a waiver, then there needs to be a waiver. Um, so that's that's my opinion. I, I would uh, suggest that we go with the uh, original table, um, except we strike the word average from maximum average foot candle and that's essentially everything the same except for that the 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 b the back lighting for doesn't pb core would be two yeah the original table um has cb core at florence village center and florence village general and highway business all on one line it just doesn't pull it out right, um, that's right. two zero two four foot candles Okay. Uh, so, all right. So, um, we've kind of we talked about the three things. I'd like to kind of like propose or like work through quickly. Um, so, are um, we? Would anybody like to propose the amendment? So, are we working? So, th this is the. We need to amend what is on the agenda, right? Yeah, we need to amend the amendment, right? So, um, so I, I guess I would take it sort of one at a time, if in terms of the things that we've discussed, if anybody would like to move to amend based on our discussions. Um, yep. Actually, I, I think my understanding is there's what was referred to us. Uh, that that is what that was the. You know what we came up with after the twelve eleven meeting. Okay. And now we have suggestions um, from the sponsor, uh, suggested amendments. Oh, okay. And we now need to vote to accept those amendments or not. So we're working from our original, and uh, got it. Okay. Uh, I, uh, I could make a motion. If, if we're feeling uh, ready for that, but if you want to... Oh, I was just going to... Rachel. Oh, yeah, so can't we just... I mean, our job here today is to recommend. Can we recommend the suggested... the suggestions with these amendments? It, on, like, conditionally... We're conditionally um, recommending... giving a positive recommendation... Does that make sense, or is that too, I, too big? <laughs> right. No. Uh, so I think that what we're doing is recommending, um, recommending with 
the um we're we're recommending with with the um, the proposed amendments with the exception of uh where okay so the original so the original was 2700 and not 3000 at all so that is um so that does not sound um and that's what's in there so that doesn't need to be amended if if what we want to do is just pass the 2700 with no carve out for the 3000 street lights right and then um the um we would have to approve the amendment to carve out the uh the uh the central business district for street lights right. so all we have to do is just not do that um and then the waivers uh language would be an amendment so oh, that's right um so i think we need um uh I don't think we need an amendment for the 2700 if we want to accept it as is. I do think we need an amendment um, for the waivers. If that if that is what people wish to do. Alex. I'll make a motion. Um, I propose to add uh, to the to the version that was referred to us uh, waiver after you know, in section five, um, after streetlights must be regulated to dim by 50% after midnight, waivers from the streetlight standards for public ways may be granted by the planning board after a site plan review procedure, if and only if necessary to improve pedestrian safety on pedestrian ways or crosswalks and modifications are consistent with International Dark Sky Association and Illuminating Engineering Society standards i would add that word um from carolyn's language as i think that's what's intended <clears throat> uh maybe we can check with carolyn so there's that um and then also striking the word average from the table um the bug table where it says maximum average foot candle it just says maximum foot candle and then maybe we can leave garrick's festival Language. Should we include that as we're doing the? I don't see why we would not just. Okay. Yeah. So so then in the festival language, which is sec uh, section six, item three, um, we will add. Uh, lights may be set to motion controls after. Um. After the event closes, uh, oh, well, yeah, no, I'm just sorry. I'm trying to get the the language that that fits. Um, so it now reads: All such temporary lights for festivals and fairs must be turned off one hour after the event closes for the day. Um, Motion controls control. Um, after this time, lights may be set to motion controls so long as they are timed to turn off five minutes after motion is detected. Is that all the amendments? Um, I want to add one thing to um, the waiver language. Is I would propose, um, and I may clean this language up a little bit. Um, so the illuminating engineering and society standards or in the event that a municipal uh a, min, a municipally uh fund funded project um um uh, loses a bunch of money from the state yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh uh if or in the event municipally of funded project or a project increases substantially increases the municipal yeah in the or or in the event that um the standards um 
significantly increases municipal cost for a project or something. Yeah, municipal municipal cost for a project. Yes, yeah, significantly and unduly. I like unduly. I don't know why we say it. And unduly increases the cost of a municipal funded of a municipal project. The cost to the city. Right. While you're in that box, um, it should be Dark Sky International, not International Dark Sky. Dark Sky International. Okay. And um, and then I would also add um, in no uh, oh, I hate I hate doing this on the fly. I don't like doing it. <laughs> I'm a slower writer than this. Um, the uh, um, we should also put a cap on the waiver. In no case shall shall any waiver increase be granted for more than I have to work on this more. Shall any waiver I need a maximum. I can't I will get back to you about that language, but <laughs> I'll talk to you, Carolyn, about like maybe what a useful because it like you need a maximum. Like if there's an exception, I still I think we need a maximum. So you're talking about for every so the Kelvin, the temperature correlated temperature and then also the bug. And also the bug, I think. Yeah, that's why I was like, as I was doing this, I was like, this is too much in here. But I, I think I think we in general need a waiver okay. that um a waiver process standard that does include the cost of the municipal, you know, cost of the city. And we also need to put a cap on it. Oh, I, I think that for every cap, like a developer also should there should be a cap for developers too. Why don't you do you want to put the cap that's the three thousand and the bug rating of three? For backlight? Yeah, I just, in terms of the language of like where it fit in is, yeah. is, is more what I was... Uh, I mean, the one thing that you want, I think would be really important if um, would be a cap if it's not on here for that that you can't increase the uplighting. You can't, uplighting has to be zero. Like that's not a, that shouldn't be waivable. Right. So why don't we do this? Let's keep the amendment to, we're going to put something in there to address the 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 project specific scenario and that's the gist of it what we've put out there so far but i'll call you tomorrow okay. um to 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 discuss okay i'm not lying but some potential yeah okay um so that's quite an amendment we have <laughs> was there a second oh <laughs> no i would second that okay <laughs> all right you gotta hit it so I think that we have a motion to approve or to recommend to the city council a with a positive recommendation with the with the amendments that uh, I'm sure Laura got down perfectly. <laughs> uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, Laura, just I I like to know that everything was was gotten. Um, do you, do you feel comfortable yeah. reading back to us what? Uh, the motion. I'm not sure it was all gotten in the um, amendment that you made to the box under the bug lighting standards. I, I want to make sure I understood. Were you just okay? So, like on page, <laughs> this is page eight here. Um, you were amending the language in the box about the waivers. Yes. And if I understood you correctly, the way you were proposing to amend it was to just change the beginning of the sentence and the beginning of the sentence let me get the right, right. was just going to say waivers from streetlight standards on public ways may be granted by the planning board. Yep. 
and, and that it was going to track the rest as is after a site plan review. Is that correct? Except Dark Sky International instead it's, of, in, instead of and standards at the end. Was that your intent, Carolyn, was to put the word standards? After Illuminating Engineering Society? Or where? Only are consistent with that should be association standards. Sorry. What? what? Oh, I see. I see what you're saying. Because otherwise, it's just are consistent with yeah, yeah. these organizations. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, yeah. are missing more standards. And they should be capitalized. Is, yeah, is standards an appropriate word to put at the end there? So that was her. Um, yes, and then the, the language. Yeah, it should be guidance because they don't really have standards. Okay. So the end of the of the waiver should read are consistent with Dark Sky International and Illuminating Engineering Society guidance. Guidance. Okay. And then the stuff about the you know or the cost to the to the municipality. Yeah. But that would be added after. So eliminate Engineering Society stand. Uh, oh, it's after. To, okay. Or you know. Okay. And you're going to give me that? Yeah, I will not... give you that. Yeah. <laughs> but So you can be formulated. Some stuff <laughs> Councillor Elkins thinks is a good idea. Okay. <laughs> so there'll be a... Just... But you guys don't have to vote for it. Y'all don't have to yeah. support that. There'll be another amendment. <laughs> there'll be a proposed amendment for for Thursday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I would just note that. It's her person. It's her person. Okay. And then, yeah, go ahead. Review the other ones. And then yep. you were striking the word average from that table. Um average foot maximum average foot candle mm -hmm. you're adding um the language from the second sentence of section um e control i believe mm -hmm. to the number four exemption for the street light festivals you're kind of adding that same language yes. yeah. there how would um, yeah i read it in a specific way do you recall yeah well i know that instead of saying however i think you started after this time, lights may be set to motion controls, and then you tracked the language as it yeah, got. In that yeah, yeah, that sounds okay. right. And then, okay. okay, yeah, I think that's those were the ones you covered, <laughs> and then you were going to give like we said specific language, right? And and this is all from the version that was referred to us. Yes, not the updated right. one, with the boxed. Okay, yeah. So positive recommendation. So your motion wasn't just to amend, it was to positively recommend. I, 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 I will uh, restate that, yes. <laughs> positive recommendation. Okay. Uh, and I will second that again. And wait, you finished typing? No, take your time. All right. Uh, and so I think we're ready for, is there any more discussion? Okay, um, Councillor Elkins. Yes. Councillor Perry. Yes. Um, Councillor Jarrett. Yes. And Councillor Mayori. Yes. All right. Oh. Man, even all this work going into it, so. <laughs> still, still, he's pushing it. Apparently we could talk this about over. this all day long. Yeah. Um, so oh, great. excellent. Wait um, for it to be out of Carolyn's life. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Um, okie doke. Um, all right. Well, so that is that is our. Oh, uh, we need to talk about the meeting schedule. Um, hopefully, we can make that a quick discussion. Um, so, do you need a minute? Well, no. I was just making sure we caught the amendment about going back to the original table as far as two o two the bug, but by uh, basing it on the one that was preferred and not the update. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so we currently meet on a Monday. Uh, when was it? The third Monday? Second. Second Monday. Second Monday. Uh, how do, how do people feel about keeping this as the, as this sort of standing gig Alex yeah <laughs> sorry you put your hand up just as I looked away uh, yeah 
Uh, I like the second Monday uh, of the month. Uh, I like the 5 p.m. start time, which we had last term, but I'm open to a change, change in that. All right. Thank you. So I am down with the, the Mondays. I do have a conflict. Of, I, have, I just have to drive the carpool every Monday, and I cannot be here till 5.30. So if you guys are willing to accommodate me, 5.30 would be fine. Five o'clock would not. Five, I in general, five o'clock can be a little tough for me too because of work and uh, being uh, being done, uh, making sure I'm completely wrapped up with the paid gig. Rachel, you have any thoughts about Mondays? Yeah, well, five thirty is a little better because I can finish my work and get the kids bed. But I, you know, I'm flexible actually. So whatever you got, whatever works for you, sounds like five thirty is best. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, I do want to note one date, April 8th, 2024 is the total solar eclipse. Uh, I will be away that whole week, actually, um, which is fine if you want to hold that um, and on that date. But I, I just want to make sure there's a quorum uh, for that. April okay. 20. Okay. 20. April 8th. Oh, April 8th. Where are you going? Did you guys see that I did it? Uh, upstate New York. Not far. Date. I didn't oh, okay. The agenda. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. Well, we'll make a note of that. And then if uh, if it needs to be, we need to adjust. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, let me see. I guess I'm confused. So that, but the, Ooh. would that April 28th of this year? April 8th. April 8th. I thought you said 28th. I was like, I don't, that's right. a Monday. I don't understand. <laughs> um. And, uh, yep. Yeah, I, I cannot make um, February nineteenth. It's my son's birthday, and I have a plan for him. It's February twelfth. Oh, excuse me. Well, there we are all having some yeah, issues for the moment. All right. Uh, thank you. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. Just because the, the you never you know I try to plan those vacation weeks, but I don't know. It doesn't always go as planned. Right. So, but February the twelfth. So it doesn't. Right. Occur. That's not the so, vacation. Okay. So it's better. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Well, good. All right. Do we need to move that? Because we are making a change from what's on here. Do we have do a consensus base? Yeah. Yeah. If it requires a vote. Yeah, I don't, I mean, because it's not. Okay. Is it already on the schedule? I mean, it's, I guess it's not in the form of an order. So if you just all agree, I'll just put it up on the calendar. It's not yet on the council web page. Yeah. I don't think there's anything. But... All right. We have consent. Consent. Look it up. It's consensus. Um, all right. Um, I think we're done here, people. I'll move to adjourn then. Second. Second. Uh, there's no discussion on no adjournment. Discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> uh, any opposed? Too bad. Yep. All right. Thank you. <laughs>